Another question that came in from our YouTube community tab is from Cher Davis. And Cher says, is it worth it to submit to contests when you're a new writer? Oh, yeah. I should have thought of that earlier. Uh, the blacklist thing, uh, the nickels, they, those are ways to get the attention of agents and managers. In fact, that's the gold standard. I, I would say, especially today, maybe even more than a few years ago, when you could just go on IDMDB Pro and find emails, which you can't anymore for production companies. I would say winning a contest, that's guaranteed to get you some some looks from agents and managers. Absolutely. I would highly recommend you do that. Okay. Another question came in from Mr. Green. Do I need to pursue creative writing in college to learn how to write a screenplay? I'm currently a business administration major. Uh, yeah, anything. Yeah, anything works. Um, anything works. Just, just write. Uh, buying a book works. Get, going to class works. Uh, learning structure is critical for film and television, way more than I think novel writing. Some writers might disagree with me. Structure in television and movies is something you must learn, e even if you hate structure, because without it, you will fail. There is a commercial form. S go outside the commercial form if you want, but understand if you don't know the commercial structure, unless you're an instinctive genius for structure, you, you will not know what television and movie structure is, especially television structure, because TV structure is way more complicated than movies and, um, and getting more so. Um, there's a show now called Sneaky Pete, and I think it has 10 storylines. Sneaky Pete has 10 storylines running almost every week. It's insane. I mean, it used to be two or three or four. Now they've got 10 storylines running in every episode practically. So structure is becoming more important in television. I'm not a big fan of thinking you gotta go to school uh, to, to learn how to write, even though I, I teach at a pretty prestigious writing school. I, I just don't think you gotta, but if that's what helps you do it, yeah. Uh, but yes, it's whatever helps you learn structure, but don't think you're gonna just absorb it on your own uh, most of the time. Okay, fair enough. Kenan Anderson writes, when writing a spec show, what should the balance be episode-wise between the main story, subplots, and fillers? It depends on what you want the story to be about. You know, a main storyline is just that. It's everything, like, in, let's take Breaking Bad, everybody knows Breaking Bad. The main storyline is, was Walt gonna be a badass drug dealer? Um, and, and, and that storyline is the storyline that's going to carry through all six, seven years of the show. Now, what supports that? It's up to you. Um, he's got two other main storylines. Is he going to save his family? And is he going to die of cancer? Um, you got 28 beats in an hour s uh, story. So your, your A storyline is going to have more beats than the others. You know what a beat is, by the way? A beat is a conflict. It's, it's, it's two people want something and it gets resolved. So you got 28 beats in an hour, maybe 30 if you want to be, be uh, super cool. Uh, and you got to get your, uh, uh, it's up to you. But it, your main storyline obviously takes the most time because it's the most interesting to us. There's no cut and dried answer to these questions, uh, except that you gotta stick within the structural form. But it's totally up to you. There, look, this isn't like being a CPA or, or even learning brain surgery. There's so, the rules are so, they're tough rules, but then you're on your own, okay? They're tough rules, then you're on your own. You, I can't tell you how many story beats to, 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 um, to ascribe to your main storylines. You are the only one who can decide that. It's so exciting. It's anarchy. <laughs> within, within the constraints. Of, within yeah. the <laughs> absolute ironclad restraints. <laughs> it's, it's a riot in a prison. And you can't get out of the prison. So, you know, you're going to be in there with a nail and boards. Ah! You can do whatever you want, but you can't get out of prison. <laughs> Great analogy. Okay. So Chortle Games writes, is a streaming service series episode written differently than a traditional network cable TV show episode? If so, what are the differences? First of all, I commend the person on their name. 
Chortle Games? Yeah, hopefully I'm saying it oh, correctly. That's cool, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. That's that is the neat. coolest name I've heard in years. <laughs> if you can stream episodes all together, that's an interesting question. we just been watching, um, because you tend to binge on them, yeah? You'll watch them one after the other. Um, you know what? Let me be honest and tell you I don't know, because we binge on shows a lot now. And I'm trying to think of, would we not binge because there's a show called Billions that we'd love to binge on, but it comes out once a week. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb here because I can. And this is probably wrong. I'm going to say there's no difference because you, you get caught up in a story or you don't. Um, I don't see why streaming means it's any different than a traditional network show, except, okay, here's one change. You might want to see people. No, that's not true either. No, Chortle. <laughs> there's no difference. I can't think of a single damn difference. And somebody can contradict me, but I don't think there's any difference. No. Okay. Fair enough. 